Welcome to this edition of On the Scene. I'm your host, Tim Kelly. Well, certainly the weather has taken a turn for the better and spring-like conditions are now here. A great opportunity to get outside and experience what Suffolk is all about. On today's program, I'm going to highlight a couple of events that are coming up in the very near future. One, the Birding Festival out at the Great Dismal Swamp National Wildlife Refuge. And we'll also bring you back downtown to talk about the Shake, Rattle and Roll, the sixth annual edition of this great car show. Stay tuned. <music> Welcome back to On the Scene. We're joined now by Dolores Freeman, a visitor services specialist here with the Great Dismal Swamp National Wildlife Refuge. Dolores, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Tim. Glad to be back. We always enjoy coming out here to talk about really what's going on with the swamp and the refuge here, but a really unique event is coming up here in late April. It's the Birding Festival. Yep. Now, if you could tell us a little bit about what takes place in a birding festival, and do you have to be someone who's in the know to really get something out of coming to the festival? We hope we address everyone. Mm -hmm. We hope we have something to offer for the real experienced life birders as well for people that are just getting interested in it. Our event will take place April the 24th, 25th, and 26th here on the refuge itself. Okay. Um, this is our eighth year, right. so each year it's grown a little bit. Now we have three full days of activities. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have starting at seven o'clock in the morning, We'll have guided bird walks at almost every one of our entrances. And then a little later in the morning, we'll have photography workshops that'll take place here at the refuge headquarters. Right. Uh, we have bus tours all day long. We will have owl prowls at night mm -hmm. on two of the nights. So from 7 a.m. until 9 o'clock at night, there'll be things going on uh, here for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Saturday is like the big day, right. and from 10 o'clock until about 2 o'clock, we'll have this whole area be filled with tents, and we have children's activities. We'll have two workshops on Saturday for new birders, okay. giving you the basics, what you need to know, mm -hmm. giving you some pointers, how to, how to take the mystery out of it right. so that you can go out and enjoy yourself. So with that menu of events, we hope we can address everyone from the newest birder right. to someone who's, our, some of our tour guides are the best to be found on the East Coast. Okay. So they'll be excellent bird walks. Why is this a good time to have a birding festival? What's generally taking place? I know we've had some kind of weird weather this winter coming into spring, so I know that you know there were some concerns about everything, but really, you know, we're settling in, we're getting a lot more spring-like weather now, but wh where are the birds transitioning to at this time of year? The birds are starting to arrive here. Actually, last week was the first big onset of the neotropical migratory birds. Mm -hmm. They come back. Many of the species actually nest here. Okay. Uh, in the winter, they are in places like Mexico, the Yucatan, and uh, the Bahama Islands, and Cuba. Right. And so these same little tiny birds that don't weigh but a few ounces uh -huh. have flown all the way there from last summer when they were born here. Now they are they wintered over in those islands in the tropics, and now they've come back. So uh, the migratory waves of them are just unbelievable. And the, the forest sort of came alive last week because you could tell when they come back right. all the singing and mm -hmm. the chattering and so now they're going to be finding mates and nesting areas and marking out territories and that makes this a great place for birding this time of year because once the birds establish their territories and make their nests they get really quiet. <laughs> So once it, they settle in, so the, to speak. Yeah, right, 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 so right. this is the perfect time when they're noisy and it helps you find them and sure. it's easy to see them in the forest. Now, where do people come from to come to the birding festival? You mentioned this is not your first go with the rodeo, no. so to speak. So again, the experience that people now know this is on the map. They know every spring what we're doing, where it's taking place, but it's a pretty big draw, isn't it? Oh yes, I have people that have made reservations from San Francisco wow. to Portland, Maine, and everywhere in between. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a wide reach. This, this is, uh, the refuge has been established as a globally important birding area. So it attracts people far and wide. Now, as far as, the, do people come back every year? I some mean, do, some do. Customers, yes, so some yeah. do. Mm -hmm. uh, the reputation of the event, because it's free, right. some of the birding festivals across the country are very expensive. Mm -hmm. Airs is free, it's all on these public lands, right. and so uh, we try to keep it that way. We have not tr 
made it so big that we don't feel like we can still give our visitors a quality experience sure. when they come and sure. so that reputation sort of carried it along. Now if you're looking to come out and you want to know the central place to go, we're at it right now. Right, right? here okay. at the headquarters. Okay. Yeah. Now the birding walks in the morning, if you uh, call and you reserve a spot on one of those, mm -hmm. Uh, they do leave from the trailhead, so okay. you'll have a designated trailhead, that, but everything else leaves from here. All the bus tours, mm -hmm. we have canoe trips, all the workshops, everything else leaves from the headquarters here on Desert Road. Now, if you haven't participated in birding before, and you decide you want to come out, you make your reservation, what should you wear, what should you bring, what should you be prepared to do? You should bring a pair of binoculars. They are uh, all price ranges. You can get a pair relatively inexpensively mm -hmm. up to several thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessary that you spend that much money. Right. You can pick up some good ones, especially this time of the year when the vegetation isn't so dense yet. Yes. You'll still be able to see. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to wear good walking shoes. It's best for the early mornings. Mosquitoes are a little bit already, but right. if you just have on something on your arms, mm -hmm. long sleeve and on your legs, you'll be comfortable. Okay. As soon as the sun comes up and things dry out, the bugs sort of die down. Mm -hmm. So um, that's mainly it. Right. Shoes okay. and comfortable clothing and binoculars and a smile on your face. <laughs> the smile is important. Yes, you leave that it at is. home, don't yeah, bother Yeah, out. bring a smile. <laughs> now, correct me if I'm wrong, but people who are, who are birding enthusiasts and are really into this activity, correct? don't they have like a book that they want to kind of check off sort of which birds they've experienced yeah. and seen? Is that kind of how that works? Yeah, Is that right? uh, they have what they call their life list. life list and they will travel near and far to check off particular species right. on their life list uh, where they want to see every species in North America mm -hmm. or you know, whatever their goal is, sure. they can have a local goal. Some people just want to see every species of <laughs> warbler that right. there is. So right. depending on their personal goal, and they used to have a notebook that they kept, most right. of it's done online now. Okay. So they have their journals that sure. they keep online sure. and they share with everyone else mm -hmm. what they've seen. So there's, it can be that complicated right. or it can be, you just love being outside exactly. and you walk along and you love the beauty of the birds. Right. Well, again, this is a great place to be as far as if you certainly want to take advantage of that. Now, let me ask you this, as far as, you know, when people come out, what are some of the more popular species, so to speak, or what are some of the ones that everybody's trying to see, whether you're experienced or not experienced? Certainly the, the guides are leading you through mm -hmm. a little bit, but if you see this particular species, what, what would that be? And everybody's going to really perk mm -hmm. up. Well, uh, some of that has to do with where the visitor is from. Mm -hmm. uh, like we have pythonotary warblers here that people get really jazzed up about seeing. It's a beautiful little yellow warbler. Right. And uh, they have the sweetest song and people really like to see those. Sure. So uh, that, some of the other species of warblers are real popular, but the star here is actually the Swainson's warbler. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that people come, come here to right. see. They expect to see one. Uh, they are found elsewhere. It's just that we have numbers of them mm -hmm. that make it more likely that you're going to see one. And also they nest here. Got it. So, you know, that sort of contributes to the likelihood they're going to see one because they're staking out their territory for nesting. Now again, the dates of the birding festival, April 24th, 25th, 26th, yes. is that right? Okay. Yes. Now if someone's watching the program, they'd like more information, certainly you can, we can refer them to the website and we'll have that address there. But if they needed to call someone, what's a good contact number to use? 757-986-3705 okay. and anyone that answers will be able to help you. Great. Now of course, we, we're primarily here today to talk about the birding festival, but you can't come out here without talking about what else is going on. And really, whether you're doing a self-guided tour, visiting the, the, the center here where we are right now, or going to one of the trailheads, just talk about kind of this time of year, what other activities are taking place here at the refuge? Well, one of the most exciting announcements that we have this spring is that we now have our auto tour open on Saturdays. Okay. Previously, the gate was only open Monday through Fridays. And now that we have an electronic gate, we are, we're testing mm -hmm. the possibility of leaving it open on Saturdays year round. Very nice. We do have it open this spring mm -hmm. during this height and uh, visitation period. Sure. So people can come to the railroad ditch entrance on mm -hmm. Desert Road. There's a self-serve permit at the gate that they can pick up, fill it out, put it in the window of their car, and the gate's open from 7.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Okay. now, Monday through Saturday. Right. Now again, I know there's always you know, tours and things going on, some through our visitor center yes. that bring people out here. So again, 
and we'll have some more information on the, the visitor center a little later in the program. But again, if you come to the center where, where the building, the structure that's right behind us here, what information can you get? What advice and, and, and tips and things to kind of branch out and do, if you will, a self-guided tour or maybe perhaps participate in organized events and things that you have going on here at the refuge? Right. We, you know, we're happy to give out the information. Of the, it's such a large area, 112,000 acres. We'll we like to talk to the visitor and try to get a feel for what they're interested in. Right. And then we can suggest an area that mm -hmm. they may find best suits their needs. Okay. So again, you can kind of help guide them yes. based on and have that discussion. Yes. Now, what are your hours here? When is the center open? The center is open from 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock, Monday through Friday. Okay. And again, we gave the contact number earlier. We certainly have the website address up there. But before we go, I want to mention again about the birding festival. If someone is considering coming, they've never been before. What would you offer some advice to them or some, some little little bit of push, shall we say, okay. to get them to come out here and take part in the birding festival? Again, we're always hoping for great weather, but again, it's going to happen rain or shine, correct? Yes, yes, okay. it will. And um, we do have spots still available on the guided tours and the guided bus tours. Uh, the demand this year has been so strong, we've right. been able to add a few more into the schedule. Okay. So if you want to go, there's no fee, but we ask you to call and We'll just take your name and phone number and put you down so that when you do come, you know you got a spot waiting for you. Now, even if those do happen to fill up, there's still plenty of activities oh, and yes. things going on. Again, yes. demonstrations yep. and things like that. So Yes, we have, oh, and one I forgot to mention was the bird banding. Right. It'll be every morning in Jericho. Okay. So uh, there's a banding research station up there, and during the festival, they open it up for the public. Very nice, very nice. So again. Birding Festival here at the Great Dismal Swamp National Wildlife Refuge coming up April 24th, 25th, 26th. Again, something you might want to put on your to-do list this year. Dolores, thanks again for Thank spending you. time with Thank us. Thank you. And again, uh, we'll have more on the scene when we return. Welcome back to On the Scene. We're joined now by Teresa Earls, who's the Tourism Development Manager here with the City of Suffolk. Teresa, mm -hmm. thanks for being with us. Thank you. Always a lot of fun to talk to you because you always have really cool things to talk about, and that's always a good start with the guests. <laughs> that's a good job to have, isn't it? <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, let's talk about one of those cool things, the sixth annual Shake, Rattle, and Roll. Now, that event is coming up in early May. Mm -hmm. If you could tell us a little bit about it, what people can expect when they come out. Sure. And really, it's more than just a car show, correct? Absolutely. We've actually taken about 170 or so classic cars, mm -hmm. and we shut down Main Street from Finney to Washington. And we line up the cars so you can walk through and, and drool over them. <laughs> um, you know, we have some that are in the progress of, or, excuse me, process of being restored. restored. And then we have some that are completely restored and right. are someone's baby. <laughs> more so than probably their actual babies. Right. Um, but we also have a stage for entertainment. Mm -hmm. We have a DJ, and we have a couple of crafters and vendors and a food vendor. And it's just a chance to stroll through Main Street and almost see it as a time, you know, long ago. Right. Because all the cars are either, they're pre-1975, and mm -hmm. they're usually much older than that. Right. Um, that is going to be Saturday, May 10th. Okay. The show registration starts early that morning. Um, we'll welcome cars around 7 a.m., 8 a.m., and then the actual show kicks off 10 o'clock. Okay. And we'll do awards at 2. Mm -hmm. We have a variety of different trophies that we provide um, depending on, you know, whether it's, you know, best in show or people's choice. Right. And there's lots of different categories. Mm -hmm. And so that's from 2 to 3, and then we close down at 3, and, and the event just kind of drives away. <laughs> <laughs> Literally and figuratively. Truly. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of these folks who have these, these vintage cars, yes. and like you said, they're their children, the way they keep them mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. But aren't they usually there so that if you had to ask questions, and certainly they're proud to talk about these, sure these children, if you will, um, because of the fact of the time and the energy and the effort mm -hmm. and, and the money that they put into this to bring it to where you see it, that you can, you know, if you want to kind of pick their brain a little bit, that's an opportunity as well. Absolutely. Uh, most people, if they bring their cars out, they will actually sit by their cars right. most of the day. They'll take turns. You know, they don't want to leave it completely mm -hmm. unattended. Right. And they will answer questions and talk to you. And a lot of these vehicles actually raced at the Suffolk Raceway, which is why we have the Suffolk, um, the Shake Round Roll Spring Car Show. It's a tribute yes. to the old Suffolk Raceway yes. that was a drag strip that used to be at the Suffolk Airport. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been shut down for many, many years. Right. But a lot of these cars, um, or even just the drivers, have once, you know, upon a time raced there. Mm -hmm. And we have an exhibit here at the Visitor Center right. um, in our first floor. We have a corridor that's dedicated to that raceway. Mm -hmm. We have old pictures and, and flyers, and we have 
lots of little souvenirs from the track, and sure. so we continue to build upon that. So if folks want to come in and you know get a sneak peek at that, mm -hmm. it's open to the public, you know, seven days a week. Good deal. Now people come out for the car shows. We said it's more than just that. There's there's good food there. Yes. Again, some entertainment. You have just it's it's almost like a carnival atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And again, the uniqueness of it is, like you said, you shut down Main Street. So again, everybody can kind of congregate there safely. Of course, the cars are still not moving around. Um, but again, you know, all we need is great weather and of yes. course a great attendance, and it always turns out to be a really neat event. And I feel like we need to be knock on wood. You I know, know you're not allowed I know, to I say that. that. I, you know, when I was thinking it, I said, you know, <laughs> just stop right here. But too late, too late. Let the cat out of the bag. But it, it is more than just that. So again, yes. if you like the cars, obviously that's the big draw. Sure. But again, it's still a good way to spend a Saturday in downtown Suffolk mm -hmm. to get out there. And of course, all the restaurants and the, and the shops, shops that are there. Absolutely. So, yeah. And I, that's really what we want people to get downtown and see all mm -hmm. the new things we have. Correct. And by then, Washington Street should be open for folks to stroll through right. and see some of the shops we have popping up along the way, some of the construction, the wonderful right. new buildings or old buildings being repurposed. <laughs> so it's just a great time to be downtown right. and, and Suffolk in general, but sure. downtown for May 10th is good. It's free and open to the public. Okay. If you want to bring a car out, there's a twenty-five dollar fee, but mm -hmm. that includes a goodie bag and a reception, right. and you get all kinds of fun stuff. Correct. But for just the average spectator, sure. it's free, and it's a great chance to bring the kids down. Maybe go to lunch, mm -hmm. or come early, go to breakfast, right. and and spend the day. That's right. So. Now, one other thing we want to certainly talk about during this segment, and that actually opens the week before. Yes. And that's the farmer's market, which again opens on Saturday, May the 3rd. Yep. But it, correct me if I'm wrong, during the farmer's market season, you're talking about Wednesdays through Labor Day yep. and then Saturdays as well. And that's all taking place here at the visitor center, but in the pavilion, yes. the nice facility we have right behind there, beautifully set up. And again, uh, a perfect place to come to get your fruits, your vegetables, um, again, local crafts and all kind of different mm -hmm. things. But tell us a little bit about the farmer's market and really how it's kind of become what it is today. Well, you know, we've had the farmer's market since 2005. Mm -hmm. And it truly started out as four 10 by 10 canopy tents right. in Market Park, which we named sure. because it didn't have a name, right. which is the little grassy area next to Seabor Station Railroad Museum on Main Street. Mm -hmm. and. From those four little tents, it has really blossomed into this beautiful farmer's market that we have since moved to our pavilion area, right. which you know was really designed to accommodate our farmer's market. Mm -hmm. um, and it is in the most visible intersection in Suffolk, That's the right. busiest intersection in Suffolk, <laughs> um, on the corner of Main and Constance. Right. It's connected to the visitor center, so mm -hmm. you always have you know lovely clean restrooms and you know access to water and coffee and right. anything else that you might want. And you know, with the farmers market now, we have 23 vendors this season. Wow, that's um, incredible. Yeah, we're definitely. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't say we're bursting at the seams, but we're pretty right, close. Right. Um, and you're going to get the fresh, locally grown fruits and vegetables, fresh cut flowers, bedding plants mm -hmm. if you want to do gardening. We even have folks coming in this year that just do doggy, gourmet doggy treats. Oh, neat. Okay. So, and we love our dogs in right. Suffolk. Yes. And you might see a few stop by when you come to the petting, or not petting zoo, but the farmer's market. Right. Now, for opening day, which you said is May 3rd, it's mm -hmm. 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay. We will have the teeny tiny farm petting zoo, mm -hmm. which is my favorite because all the animals are really small. <laughs> they really are teeny tiny. Right. Well, with the exception of a few, but they're small for their, for, but for their but breed. They're right. You know, there's like a little tiny donkey right. and a little tiny llama. Not, not, you're not going to put it in your purse and walk off no. with it, but at the same time. Oh, yeah. but you'd want to if you could. They're so <laughs> cute. Um, so we have the Teeny Tiny Farm. Oh, we have a magician coming. Mm -hmm. um, we have the Suffolk Art League. We'll be doing crafts, hands-on activities for kids. Um, we have a variety of activities, and we try right. to keep everything programmed every first Saturday of the month. Right. So you can set your uh, schedule by that, because I know a lot of times folks will call and say, is the petting zoo going to be there? Right. It will be here the first, first Saturday, Saturday of the month. The month. Um, that's not to say that we won't have other things going sure. on, you know, throughout the month. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll have live entertainment on right. the opening day, and we try to do that a few times a month. Sure. You know, just to kind of keep up, have some music, so you guys are strolling through. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, but the opening day, you know, there's balloons for the kids. Right. And it's just a fun time to come out and, and to really get a feel of, you know, the season. It's also sometimes it's one of the first chances you get to get out of your house. Correct. You know, we've had a very snowy, cold yes, winter. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. <laughs> and people have been really dying to get right. out. So this is a great opportunity. Great. And like you said, it's Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Wednesdays are from 3 to 6 p.m. Right. And that will run from the beginning until Labor Day, and then right. we'll just do Saturdays from then on. But it's 9 to 1 this year on Saturdays. Now, for someone who hasn't been to the farmer's market before, and I've heard this may be the key. If you're looking for something, those those the fresh fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. and stuff, getting there early might be the key to be able to come away with what you want, correct? Sure. Not to say there aren't things that are out there the entire time, but I mean, your selection's gonna be better, correct? I think, well, you're saying the early bird gets the worm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was going there. Yeah. 
Um, I would say that it is always fun to get there early sure. because you get everything, you get a first dibs at everything. Correct. But I will say that our vendors are really good about, you know, anticipating mm -hmm. the needs of the customers and they will often bring enough where they have to replenish their sure. supply throughout sure. the day mm -hmm. and they will bring a huge truck and they'll go back right. and they'll get more and that sort of thing. So I, you know, that's not to say they won't run out of something, that's right. which is a good problem sure. to have. Sure, sure. Um, but, you know, when you have like fresh meats and eggs right. and things like that, you mm -hmm. know, once it's gone, it's gone until the next week. So, right. but it's been... It's been a wonderful process. It's so much fun. We have great parking. Mm -hmm. We have disabled access. Right. You know, live music, ceiling fans. Yes. You know, all the good stuff. And when we get further into the season, mm -hmm. which is way at the other end of the season, <laughs> but in October we'll be doing movie nights in the pavilion right. again, and we've already booked our movies. So we're very excited about it. It's, we look at it as a whole season. It's not Correct. just one day at a time. That's right. We definitely look at it as a whole season, and what can we do to provide entertainment mm -hmm. and you know a great outlet for fresh fruit and produce. Right. Um, where we will have a variety of things, like we said, but, you know, we have Beekeeper Day and Meet the Great Dismal Swamp Day, right. and, you know, we're working with different organizations mm -hmm. to come out, so there's always something for everybody. And, and it sounds like a lot of educational components as well. Exactly. Because even if you're there to talk to the vendors, and you said you have over 20 of them, mm -hmm. so again, if you miss out on one thing, but there's 19 or 20 plus more vendors to, to see, and again, with the entertainment and the extras that y'all build into that, it makes it where, well, you might come for this, but you stay for that Absolutely. kind of a thing. And then the fact is, a lot, it's definitely fam family friendly. I mean, mm -hmm. the kids will love everything. You talked about the first Saturday of the month, having the, the, the petting zoo and things like mm -hmm. that. But again, with the entertainment and the extra things, like I said, you guys build in, I mean, it really makes it a must attend event mm -hmm. in addition to the shopping. And the best thing is, it's free. Absolutely. And, you know, most of our events at Civic are either free or right. very low cost. Indeed. And, and that is such a huge bragging point for us because mm -hmm. so many cities, you know, they have wonderful events, but they become a burden for right. the participants because they cost so much. Correct. But we really do our best to, you know, provide either free or close to free mm -hmm. as far as events and entertainment. And we're really proud to be able to offer that. And, you know, like we said, we'll have different people throughout the time, but we're also talking about adding, adding some canning workshops right. and possibly even some yoga. <laughs> Because it really is a community event, and Indeed. we wanted to extend kind of a community wellness, mm -hmm. you know, message out there as well. Now, if people are watching this program and think, okay, well, this is great, what's going to be taking place? And I know y'all do a great job with using your website, which yes. is a great, great tool. I keep saying the word great, but it is. It's great. Um, I'll but take let, it. Let's give that address again, the web okay. address, so people can go there. It is wwwsuffolk dash fun.com. Okay. Um, we also have a farmer's market Facebook page where okay. we can update, you know, more regularly. If you want to know what time something is coming sure. up, you can get it immediately. We also include recipes for depending on what kind of produce is available at that time of year. Perfect. So we try to, you know, engage the public through mm -hmm. our website, suffolk-fun.com. Right. And even if you can't remember that, but you can remember visit suffolkva.com, that'll, that'll get you there too. Now, what's so. the number here to the visitor center if people needed sure. more information to call? Them? It's 757-514-4130. All right. Well, Teresa, of course, we talked about the Farmer's Market, which kicks off on Saturday, May 3rd. Mm -hmm. Shake, Ride, and Roll, the sixth edition of that is Saturday, May 10th. Yep. And we also have these brand new calendar events that are available at the visitor center. Okay. We have, you know, if you're not familiar with us, we're at the old Nansma County Courthouse on the corner of Maine and Constance, and we are open seven days a week from 9 to 5. So if you want to grab a calendar of events, you can come by and see us, or you can just check out our website because it's there as well. Good deal. Well, thank you, Teresa. Thank you. All right. That will do it for this edition of On the Scene. I'm your host, Tim Kelly. We'll see you next time.